Friction is a concept that is very common in physics. But what is it? What is friction? This is a loudspeaker. It's actually quite a heavy one. It used to be my grandfather's actually, built in the 60s or 70s, something like this. Anyway, it's standing on some carpet. I want to push it. I want to move it. So I apply a force. I'm applying a force now. Nothing's happening. I'm applying a stronger one, still nothing. I'm increasing the strength now. The street. Oh, it's, uh, it started to move, and it's actually quite easy to move after that. So, what is going on? The action is actually occurring at the interface between the box and the carpet. Here I'm representing the bottom of the box. And here I'm representing the carpet. Let's zoom, right? I'm going to zoom on this point. The surface of my box is not perfectly smooth. So it will show up a bit like this, maybe if I zoom. Neither will be the surface of my carpet which might show a little bit like that. When I move my box, say, like that, with the force, so this thing will move a tiny little bit. It will move until it reaches in contact with that. So, I will be in this situation. At this point, there will be a force of the box on the ground and the ground will react by applying a force on the box. So if I do the free body diagram on the box, there will be me pushing it and the imperfections of the interface pushing back. Therefore, my box will not move. However, if I increase the force on the box, the force here becomes bigger. And this one would also become bigger unless it breaks. If it breaks, then suddenly it's going to be easier for the box to move. There'll be much less friction. It's like if I'm polishing the ground and the surface of the box. Let's try to represent this phenomena graphically. On the x-axis, I place the force I apply, and on the y-axis, the friction that results. When I apply a small force, I will get a friction of same magnitude, but opposite direction. That's why my box is not accelerating, it's not moving. So I can draw a line here with a slope of 1. But if I pass a certain threshold, I apply a force above a certain value, then suddenly my box moves easily. The friction decreases. I've got two zones clearly here, two behaviors. I've got a static zone and a dynamic zone, or better known as kinetic zone. If I'm in a static zone, the friction will be equal to the force I apply in magnitude. If I'm in the kinetic zone, it will be kind of constant. Let's consider this point, the point in between the two zones. We can actually calculate the friction at this point. The friction at this point will be equal to the product of the coefficient of static friction, written mu s, by the normal force. We can also find out the friction in the dynamic zone. The friction in the dynamic zone will be equal to the product of the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. And it makes sense. Imagine if my box was much heavier. In order to get it start to move, I would need to apply a bigger force, right? So that would be extended higher. Makes sense, right? Because if I have a bigger mass, I have a bigger normal force. 
So remember this relationship between friction and normal force. Remember that if you are at the point of slipping, meaning that you are about to start to move, then you can always write down that the friction is equal to mu s by the normal force. And also, if you are moving, you also have this relationship, but this time you have to consider the coefficient of kinetic friction. These coefficients depend on the two interface. For example, if you have some uh, wood on some snow, or uh, some wood on the carpet, or some metal on some uh, leather, whatever. This combination of two interfaces will have associated with them two uh, coefficients of friction, the static one and the kinetic one. We have a slope, which is making an angle theta with the horizontal. And actually, it's more like a plank, because here I could imagine a lever. And if I turn the lever, I can rotate the plank, so I would change the angle theta. On the plank, there is a, a box. You can easily imagine that if theta is small, the box will stay as it is, it will be at rest. But if I increase the angle theta, then there'll be a point where it starts slipping. So I move my lever and I increase theta. And when the box just starts slipping, I stop and I measure theta. So theta, this angle, will be the angle at which the box is about to start to slip. The question is, calculate the coefficient of static friction. Step number one, free body diagram. Well, I have mg, I have the normal force, and I will have friction that opposes any motion the box could have. Then step two, define some axes, convenient ones. So x-axis, for example, that way, positive, along the slope, and y-axis, positive, upwards. Good. Step three, expressions of the net force. Two dimensions, so I will express the components. fx will be equal to minus f, and here I've got theta there, so plus mg sine theta. fy, normal force, minus mg cos theta. Step number four. Newton's laws. The box is about to slip. It's not actually slipping right now. So it's still at rest. Not for long if I increase theta, but it's, now it's still at rest. So it's zero. Okay, step number five is solve. So that's where you step back a little and you check out the problem, what you're looking for. I'm looking for the coefficient of static friction. What do I know? Is that I am at the point of slipping. Therefore, I can write down that F, the friction, is equal to the product of the coefficient of static friction by the normal force. That is, if I rearrange, I find mu s is f over n. Now the relationships I got from step three and four allow me to find expressions for f and n. Look, here I realize that f is equal to mg sine theta. If I put f the other side, I just get this. Same thing for n. If I put mg cos theta the other side, I get n equals mg cos theta. I could substitute these expressions in here, right? Let's do that. Mu s equals mg sine theta over mg cos theta. The mg's cancels, leaving me with sine on cos, which is tan. The coefficient of static friction is tangent of theta, where theta is the angle for which my box is just about to start slipping. 